The era of Angela Merkel is finally over. In this video, we're going to take a look at the national elections in Germany over the weekend. We're going to see how they exemplify precisely the kind of disaster that Merkel has been to her nation. And stick with me to the very end of this video, where I'll show you precisely how the end of Merkel is really nothing less than the end of the globalist modernist era in Europe. You're not going to want to miss this. Greetings, everyone. Dr. Steve here with you. Wonderful to be with you as always. I am your daily fake news antidote as each and every day I provide patriotic analysis to help you to think better so you can feel better in these crazy and turbulent times. So make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. Before we begin, if you're looking to lose a few LBs, who isn't, right? You're going to love Keto Elevate. If you want all the benefits of elevated ketone levels, but without actually having to do all the difficult parts of the keto diet, you know, cutting out the carbs and those wonderful breads and the like, you're going to love Keto Elevate. I use it myself, tastes great, curbs my appetite for hours, and if you click on that link below right now, you're going to get your very first shipment of Keto Elevate on its way to you right now at a whopping 51% off the regular price. So don't wait, click on that link below and reap the rewards that Keto Elevate can bring to your life today. All right, gang, let's dive right in here. Germany had their national elections over the weekend. Elections that were punctuated by the official end of the 16-year tenure of Angela Merkel as chancellor. And the results of the election, I believe, well, many believe, were a testimony to the disaster that those 16 years actually were. The results of the election are now in, and it is official. Angela Merkel's party, the CDU, the Christian Democratic Union, suffered their worst political defeat ever. I mean, it really doesn't get worse than that. Merkel CDU clinched just over 24% of the vote, which is absolutely shocking when you realize that that's the first time they've hit below 30% in the post-war period. If you don't know, the CDU, the Christian Democratic Union, is technically the center-right party in Germany, but they've become center-right in the way, you know, Mitt Romney or Liz Cheney or center-right. They're like a New York Times Republican, right? Like Brett Stevens. The distinction between them and the political left is totally without any difference. They they are, that's a way to think of it. They're a distinction without a difference from the left. And that's only worsened under the leadership of Merkel, who's dragged the party to the left and has, has made it virtually unidentifiable from the major center-left party, which is the SPD, okay, who actually for the first time in ages actually beat out the CDU this past weekend. CDU's dominated German national politics for decades since their founding just after World War II. I mean, no parties even come close. The CDU has occupied the chancellor's office 57 of the last 72 years of the Federal Republic of Germany's existence, okay? They've, they've never gotten lower than 31% of the vote in their entire existence. So this was a major, major disaster for the CDU this election over the weekend. As far as the center-left SPD, they squeaked past the CDU barely by just a couple of percentage points. And that, ironically, represents one of their worst elections as well. This election was not merely the CDU's worst yet, but it was also the center-left SPD's second worst vote share since the Second World War. They were only outdone by their total shellacking back in 2017, the last national election. And this fact alone is calling out all the nonsense coming from the ultra-left fake news media claiming that this Germany election was a vindication for the left or a signal that the left is back in Europe. It's utter and complete nonsense, as we'll see. Uh, and uh, and you'll see as well as, the, as they try to form a coalition government. The Greens did do relatively well, but nothing in comparison to how well they were supposed to do. The classical liberal party, the FDP, did just as well as the Greens. And the so-called far-right, radical, right, ultra-right AFD, or alternative for Deutschland, which is their Patriot Party, did quite well given the fact that the last election back in 2017 was the first time they ever entered into Parliament with 13% of the vote. As a matter of fact, the AFD made some awesome gains in Eastern Germany where they remained very, very popular. They came in first place in Saxony with 25% of the vote and Thuringia, 24% of the vote. All of this stands in stark contrast to the far-left party in Germany known as Die Linke, the left. They were basically crushed in this election. I don't know if they'll have any seats at the end of the day with this one. So, I mean, it's just utter nonsense um, in terms of that what we saw over the weekend was some kind of vindication of the left, let alone a renaissance of the left. 
which is more the projection of the far left activists disguised as journalists. Instead, I think what we saw over the weekend is a further indicator of a dynamic that we've been tracking with for some time now on this channel. And that's the dynamic of fragmentation and fractionation and social fission that's happening literally all over the world. As we move from a modernist, globalist, one-size-fits-all world dominated by a single majoritarian, majoritarian political parties or systems like the Soviet Union to a more postmodernist, decentralized world organized around custom culture and tradition, we're increasingly seeing nations and national political structures breaking up and fracturing and dividing along more regional and racial lines. And as it turns out, Germany is no exception to this postmodern dynamic. Take a look at this chart. It's absolutely fascinating. On the left are the average number of parties, political parties in the Bundestag, the German parliament. As you can see, it was about four parties or so when it all started. Then as we move into the 1970s and 80s and 90s, that number drops to basically two dominant parties, maybe a third in the wings. But notice what happens when we leave the modernist 20th century and enter the postmodern 21st century. The number of parties skyrocket to now over six. That's twice the amount of parties they had in the 80s and 90s. The 20th century was the vanguard of the modern age, and the modern age was characterized as a single globalist, one-size-fits-all political and economic system. Now, the world is fracturing and breaking apart, and in many cases, seceding to more regionally specific and racially specific organizations. And this is what's often referred to as neo-tribalism. And Germany's election over the weekend, I would argue, exemplified precisely that. The two major centrist political parties, the CDU and the SPD, have both splintered and fractured into multiple so-called third parties. And this is exactly what we've been seeing in Scandinavia and in Italy. Actually, this dynamic is often referred to as the Dutchification of European politics. The Dutchification of European politics represents the highest level of political fragmentation that we've seen since World War II in Europe. Gang, this is why we're seeing Europe explode right now over these vax mandates. Vax mandates are old technocratic modernist politics, okay? It's the use of technology and industry to rule the masses. And more and more populations want nothing to do with this anymore. You'll definitely want to check out a video I did. I uploaded on the world exploding over vax mandates. I got a lot of on-the-ground video fo footage from Europe. It's going to absolutely amaze you. I'll link it down below for you in the pinned comment section below so you can watch it after this video. But whether we're talking about you know, this mass uprising against vax mandates going on throughout Europe or just the fragmenting of German politics and European politics in general, we're seeing the same thing. The modern world is receding and a new postmodern world is rising. So what does all this mean for Angela Merkel? <laughs> well, in many respects, we might be seeing the last of the great modernist leaders in Merkel. The end of her tenure may indeed mark the end of the modernist period in Europe that was so you know, dominated by the Cold War. There's rumors that she's, of course, going to be vying for the presidency of the European Parliament. She's trading Berlin for Brussels. Uh, she's, uh, she'll eventually most likely end up as president of the EU, which, of course, is itself an increasingly broken and limping system whose ultimate end is only a matter of when, not if. So I'm sure she'll continue to be on the world stage in some way, shape, or form for the foreseeable future. Indeed, whatever coalition that this last election is going to try to result in will most likely take a very, very long time to put together. It's so fragile. So she'll be in Berlin for the next couple of months at least. But when all is said and done, I do believe we're seeing the end of Merkel. And with that end, we're seeing the end of the old globalist modernist Europe. Like Merkel, the degeneration of the old modernist system will take some time to crumble into dust. But make no mistake, as we move from a modern world into a postmodern world, crumble it shall. Now, before you go, you will definitely want to check out that uh, video I did on the world exploding over these vax mandates. The on-the-ground coverage is going to absolutely blow your mind. You're going to love it. So make sure to click on the link, and I'll see you over there. God bless.